Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to Unstuck, the road to reinvention. I have a question for you tonight, as I always do. What happens when you don't recognize your own inner beauty, strengths, and talents? It's possible you could go from job to job or career to career or suffer in your relationships <laughs> excuse me, because you don't know who you are. Our guest tonight is going to share her painful but hopeful story of reinvention. And I'm going to introduce her in a moment. But first, I want to welcome you to Unstuck the Road to Reinvention. I'm Lisa Neller, your reinvention life coach. I help women thrive by helping them overcome obstacles as they pursue their dreams. So I like to work with ambitious women who have goals and dreams, who want to make life happen for themselves, and I help them get around those obstacles. So if you know anybody who is interested in moving forward in life, have them contact me. They can find me at lisanellercoaching.com or reinventionlifecoach.com. So now I'd like to introduce my lovely guest, Carrie Ann Munstead. Carrie Ann is an award-winning portrait photographer, a speaker, coach, and author. She is an artist and nurturer, fiercely motivated by her, by using her talents to make women feel confident, empowered, and whole. Growing up with an abusive role model left her filled with fear. She countered this by attempting to be perfect, but never took the time to understand who she was. So she continued down a path of perfection that led her to a marriage, a job, and other endeavors that weren't right for her. Carrie Ann started a journey to get to know herself in her 30s. On her spiritual journey, she connected back to the thing that brought her joy as a child, photography. She discovered an innate talent to capture a person's true inner beauty, the real person inside. Personally, Carrie Ann is a wife mommy to her toddler son, stepmother to a teenage daughter, and doggy mama. And she's also married. <laughs> so, <laughs> Welcome, Carrie Ann. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> ah, it's such a pleasure. I've been looking forward to this because I know a little bit about, yeah, I know a little bit about your story because we've talked a little bit before. But yeah. um, in that, um, in, in this bio, I don't really go over, um, your whole, you know, adult life here. So like, let's start from the beginning of your reinvention story. Um, some of the work that you've done as an adult and uh, give us some of that background. Yeah, well, right, every reinvention story starts at the beginning. So, you know, mine goes back to, and it says it a little bit in my bio that, um, you know, I grew up um, in a situation where it benefited me to be perfect, right? Like. Uh, the the better I was, the less that I got in trouble, the more perfect that I was, um, I didn't get, I, I got in less trouble from that. So that's kind of this philosophy that I adopted from a very young age was just to, um, you know, get the best grades and, you know, be, just be, be the best at everything. And it didn't really it didn't really matter what I wanted. It just mattered that I needed to be the best at everything so that um, so that I didn't get in trouble for things. So no. that, um, you know, perfection. And I know that that's how, that's kind of how a lot of people start out too. Um, it, it followed me through much of my life. It of course followed me through high school. And, you know, I was always striving, striving for so many things, right? Striving to, like I said, get the best grades and, you know, I was the captain of my volleyball team and I was always excelling at everything, everything, achieving more, achieving more. And yeah, it like looked great, right? It looked impressive. But again, it was like I was only I was only striving to achieve things for a particular reason. I really I wasn't developing my own thoughts. I wasn't developing my own opinions, opinions. I wasn't getting to know who I was at all. And so, you know, after high school, um, that followed me, of course, right? So it followed me into college. I, I went to, um, to ASU and got a bachelor's degree in business um, because that's 
what I kind of thought that I was supposed to do, right? Someone told me that I was supposed to do that. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea. And then I took a job that I thought would look good. And I got married because I thought that that's what I was supposed to do at that age. So I just kept doing these things. I, I went to MBA because I thought that that's what I should do at that time. You know, you go to bachelor, you get your bachelor's degree, then you go get your master's degree. It was just like this path of things that I thought that I was supposed to do. But really, I had no idea what I wanted to do at all. And, you know, when you're when you're doing a lot of things based on shoulds and supposed tos, not on your wants, like you can't keep that. It just I mean, you can't maintain that forever. So, of course, so many things when, I, you know, when I when I finally got to that place in my early 30s where I looked in the mirror and I didn't I didn't know myself for one thing and I didn't like the person that I was looking at. I mean, you know, with perfectionism comes being right about everything. And so many, so many, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier, yeah. just, you know, so, so many things that, um, that I didn't even like about myself. So I didn't know who I was. I didn't like who I was and I knew that I needed to change that. So with that unraveling of my perfection, um, came a divorce, uh, you know, it just, just, it, and it came, a lot of a lot of dark time for myself really unraveling that perfectionism and you know figuring out who i was figuring out what my own opinions were um you know you lose some friends along the way who who maybe you know weren't quite didn't didn't fit into the new model of you of who you are so yeah. it was definitely a, a tough time but you know that's kind of the, the journey of my unraveling and my my reinvention um for throughout, um, you know, of, of my perfectionism. Well, <clears throat> but you had a pretty good job at a university, did you not? I, I did, yeah. <laughs> so that was definitely a big part of the reinvention as well. Yeah. I did. So that job that I talked about uh, that l l looked good, well, it, it did look good. And it was a really good job. I was um, an assistant dean. Well, I worked my way up to being an assistant dean at a university. Uh, mm -hmm. I started I started at one level and just kept, you know, at the perfectionist that I was, <laughs> kept kept achieving more and achieving more and worked my way up from an administrative assistant to an assistant dean. Um, and I was there for 17 years and it was a it was a really secure job. It was a it was a good job. It was a nice place to go to work at. Um, but after a while, I just realized that, like, it wasn't fulfilling my soul. And I, I didn't feel like I was actually contributing anything to the world. And I wanted to contribute something to the world. And I know that I was doing good work at the university, but on a, on a grander scale of actually like contributing something to the world, I just felt like I was just wasting away my time sitting in an office. So, um, so two and a half years ago, after 17 years at the university, I uh, decided to quit there and go full time with my portrait photography business. So that was a, a huge leap of faith, a huge reinvention because I was 40 years old at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, like so weird to leave someplace that you're so established at and I'm 40 and it's like, should I do this? But I knew that this is like in my soul and in my heart. I knew that this is what I was meant to give to the world. So I went for it and I did it. Um, yeah. So where, did you start your photography business while you were working full time then? And like you had a, you, you, you said you went back to this childhood thing that you loved. Um, at what, what point was it like a few years before you quit, you started that or when, how did that work? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I got back into photography uh, probably about 10 years before I quit, but it was, a, it was definitely an evolution. I started out just doing some like nature and landscape photography and I joined a photography club and then just things kept evolving until um, there was a time when I was building my website. It was a couple of years, about three years before I actually went full time. And I was building my website and getting my social media going. 
And I looked at those things and I said, whoa, I need pictures of myself for those. <laughs> and I like almost lost it because I didn't have any pictures of myself. I was at like the highest weight that I had ever been at. And I just like shied away from the camera. I didn't want to be in pictures at all. But as I'm developing these marketing pieces, like I knew that I had to have those uh, those pictures of myself. So I went and had my own portrait session um, with a photographer in LA. And it was during that session that um, I really put all of my focus on photographing women because going into that, I was filled with so much anxiety, like, you know, and those, those voices in my head were saying, Carrie, you're too fat to be photographed. And they were mm -hmm. saying, you know, Carrie, the photographer, she doesn't want to photograph you. And who do you think you are? So this perfectionist voice in my head was saying all these things. And, um, and I went for it anyway. And it was the most incredible experience because I felt more beautiful and more loved by that photographer. And it was just such a, it was like the most confident and empowering photo session that I had ever done before. And I knew in that moment that I wanted every woman to have that same experience. So that was about four or five years before I actually went full time. So after having that experience, I ran home and um, I converted the office that I'm in right now in my home to my studio. And for about three years, I you know, started out just photographing friends and then started it into a part time business. And then, you know, once I had the model down and I knew that I could succeed, I went full time with it. So I definitely did start it on the side before I went full time with it. That's cool. And it's great to know. So for any of you out there who are watching or listening um, and you're considering starting another business on the side and you're still working full time, you can kind of take your time and develop your skills right as you're going. Absolutely. So, yeah. So let's talk about what kind of work you did to shift from being fearful to having more confidence and having the confidence to actually take that leap. Yeah, absolutely. So that photography session that I just talked about was honestly like the first thing that really helped to shift um, my fears to more confidence. Um, you know, when we, we all we all look at ourselves in the mirror and we think certain things of us, right? Like we look at ourselves and we are typically very negative towards ourselves, right? Like, oh, my, my nose is too big or, you know, my double chin's too big or my arms are too big, you know, all those things. But then I had these photographs of myself where like I didn't see those negative things anymore. I didn't really see like myself on the outside at that point. I saw I saw the person who I was inside of me staring back at me and not only the person that I was, but that person that I was becoming. And I was able to change the like the negative and fearful words that I had been saying to myself to more words of positivity and confidence because I had this visual reminder now of like the power and confidence that I felt. So that particular photo session was the first thing that really helped me start changing um, those kind of fearful thoughts to more confidence and really taking steps forward to to move out on my own in my business. And um, the other thing that I did that really helped me change that was to work with a coach, right? Coaches mm -hmm. are amazing. And the coach that I worked for this particular part, she's a life coach. And she helped me work through some serious fear around not only, not only business stuff, like leaving my corporate job to go out on my own, but, um, but some personal things too. And I, I had this story that's a little bit off, but I, but it's such a good story. So I'm going to share it. So, um, good. in, so I went full time with my business in January of 2018. And in August of 2018, after 15 years of trying to get pregnant between two husbands and <laughs> thinking it was never going to happen, I got pregnant. <laughs> Naturally, yeah. amazing, right? That's awesome. Okay. But so also the fear set in fear of not being able to be a good um, not being able to be a uh, have a business and be a mom at the same time. And honestly, the biggest fear was that I was 40 and I was fat and that I was going to not be able to carry my baby full term. So with the excitement of being pregnant also came 
um, some super deep fears that I was going to lose my baby before I even had him. So as soon as I found out and got really excited that I went into a deep depression and actually like withdrew from life for a few, for a few months. And I'd been working with a life coach at the time. And, um, I even stopped taking her calls for a while because I was so depressed. But finally, when she got a hold of me, uh, she said, you know, she talked to me through a lot of things and she just said, you know what, what if it was easy? That was her question. And it seems so simple, but she just said, what if you have an easy pregnancy and what if you have an easy delivery and what if when he gets here, you have uh, an easy baby? So I started shifting my mind from these, these, these thoughts of fear to these thoughts of like ease, right? And every time they would come up, I would think, what if it was easy? What if it was easy? And I kid you not, even being old and fat, <laughs> I had an easy pregnancy. I had a long but easy delivery. And mm -hmm. it has just been an ease of a child. I mean, he's a toddler, so don't get me wrong. Like he's got stuff right now, but he's been, he's been an easy baby. So all those things, she really helped me shift from more fearful to more to, to ease and to be able to really get unstuck and move forward. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, and you see that in coaching all the time, but um, people do allow their fears. Well, fear is a feeling, right? And right. it's caused by all the thoughts you have in your head, like all the things you said. And yeah. then you, you just shifted those thoughts, which was is brilliant that you just did it, you know, instead of because some people are resistant to that. They, they don't right. want to shift their thoughts and they're like, oh, no, it's, I'm still going to worry, you know, <laughs> but and it's a course, choice. It's a choice. Yeah. It is a choice. And of course they were still worried, right? It's not like I completely got rid of them, but I got rid of those thoughts enough because I had been doing some work with her for a while to be able to shift them enough to be able to really, you know, focus on actually like having a healthy pregnancy and getting through it in a positive way. Yeah, sure. That's yeah. so great. That's yeah. so great. So Carrie Ann, how do you define inner beauty? Yes. So <laughs> um, how do I define inner beauty? Um, one of my, one of my photography mentors at one time said this, and I say it all to as many people as I can now, because it's so important and that, um, what we look like, our bodies are the least important, are the least interesting parts of us. Our bodies are the <laughs> least so interesting parts of us, right? Yeah. The most interesting parts of us are what's in our head and in our heart and in our soul. Yes. Like the humanness of, a, as, of us is the most interesting part. So that's what inner beauty is to me. It's the, it's who we are in our mind and our hearts and our soul. And, you know, the beauty and the kindness and the love that we put out into the world. I love that. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank perfect. Well, perfect. I don't, I don't claim, I don't claim the first part of it, but I share it as often as I can. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Right? I really it's like so, that. It's yeah. so important. And, and we, we, we place so much on the, on the outer beauty because that's what we have been, um, that's what we've been told to do by, by, by media for so many years. So to really shift it from, you know, the outside is the less, the less interesting to the inside being the more interesting. It really can create a really, uh, a really big shift within us. Yeah. I blame uh, Madison Avenue and Mad Men and all those <laughs> people in the fifties who were creating advertising, you know, like it's so sexy to smoke. And so this, you know, and oh my exactly. God, it's just ruined women for so long. We thought we had to have this beautiful persona or whatever, you know, we're Absolutely. Just, yep. just human. I'm, and I agree. Inner beauty is what matters. Yeah. And yeah. it started, I think a lot of that started after the wars and when people started, um, you know, having accumulating wealth more and they wanted more and more. And so mm -hmm. we've been seeing this advertising through decades, right? Like yes. our grandparents, our parents, and now us. So we have been had, we've had the same, um, you know, training for, for decades now, but finally things are starting to shift. So I am, I, you know, it's still, it's still the messages are out there a lot, but I'm confident that in the next, you know, generation or two, we will start focusing a lot more on who we are as people and not what we look like on the outside. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what three to five tips would you give women 
who are considering a big change as you did, you know, yes. moving from, um, well, growing up in your thirties, of course, and then, and then shifting from the corporate job to the full-time business. Right. Yeah. My, my big change that I'm talking about is all around the leaving like the corporate job and going into my business. So, and we've yeah. talked about them a little bit as we have, you know, talked today. So mm -hmm. the first tip is definitely to prove it first, right? Like we talked about, I didn't just, um, one day leave my corporate job and then start my business. Yeah. <laughs> I, for a few years, and, and I'm not saying it has to take a few years, but for me, I took a few years to test it on the side and to work through a lot of things and to make sure that it was going to be a profitable business for me. So that when it was time for me to, um, to leave my corporate job and go out on my own as, um, as a small business owner, I knew that it was going to work. Of course, there are still, there's still risks and there's still unknowns, but for the model that I was doing, I knew that that particular model was going to work. So that's the first tip. Um, the second tip is definitely to have a plan and that can be um, goals or a financial plan. And I'm not saying that you have to know everything, right? Cause things are gonna change over time, but definitely have goals of like, you know, how much, how much money you want to make every month and how you're going to get to that and where you're going to get your clients from. And if you have a month where you're not bringing in enough money from your business, like how are you going to pay the bills? And again, I'm not saying that you have to know all of the answers right up front and have it done perfectly. I'm sure. just saying to like, just think about it, just have somewhat of a plan just so that, um, you know, there's, you, you have something <laughs> going for you, um, you know, when you, when you first start your business. So yeah. the third tip is that <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to make the change. What? You, just have, what? <laughs> you, would, you would never think you that don't? I would have perfectionism. <laughs> so, you know, that was definitely something that, that kept slowing me down. I knew for a long time that I wanted to leave my corporate job and go out on my own as a business owner, but it was this constant, you know, like I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough photographer. I'm not a good enough business person. Like all of these perfectionist thoughts were going on in my head, just continuing to tell me and, and but keeping me stuck from moving forward into what I really wanted to do. So just know that you don't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to have everything planned out perfectly. You don't have to be perfect at your craft. You don't have to have the perfect website and the perfect social media. You don't have to have anything perfect to make a big change. Just take the leap, do it with all of your heart and take the leap and, and the rest of it will come along the way. And I have one more tip and that's the fourth tip and that's to work with a coach. Right. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> whether it be a reinvention coach or it's a life coach or a business coach, like whatever works best for you. And it could be all three. Right. Like I've worked with photography coaches. I've worked with a life coach. I've worked with a business coach. I have worked with all sorts of coaches and I've only been in business for one and a half years. So um, so hiring a coach is definitely a way to get you to your goals a lot faster. They can help you change your thoughts like we talked about earlier um work on and then you know work through the business part of it too and help you get to those goals that you have a lot faster so um that is always a huge tip of mine to definitely get some kind of coach as well great advice carrie well, thank you. <laughs> i love that no i'm working with a coach too and yeah. um there's nothing like it to have someone who's walked the path before you yes. and can um really guide you and and question you as to your thoughts about everything and then you just get ideas and all kinds of things come up so yeah, exactly. you, you get you get farther on your path quicker and you get more inspiration and look at things a lot differently. So I would that's that should have been tip number one, actually. <laughs> they weren't in order of importance. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to add to, to um, the reinvention um, journey? Oh, I would just say that it is never too late to reinvent yourself. Um, I. I reinvented myself uh, in a couple of ways, one with the job, one with leaving my corporate job and going to a small business, going to be a business owner, and one with really working on those perfectionist thoughts and going from a person whose life was completely 
um, centered around perfectionism to now a life that's centered around authenticity and being true mm -hmm. to who I am. And I'm not saying that I don't have perfectionist thoughts anymore, right? Like it's it's not something that just happened that I can just change overnight. It's something that um, is, is like a lifelong journey. But, you know, I started on that path um, of, of perfectionism to authenticity, um, you know, in my 30s. And really it's taken me <laughs> that long of time to get to where I'm at now. Um, and I left my corporate job when I was 40 to start a business. I have had a baby when I was 41. So like, it's literally never too late to reinvent yourself. So if you know that, you know, you have something that you have a gift in you that you want to share with the world. And if that's what you want to do with your life, like, you know, go for it, do it. It's never too late. That's such great advice. And I'm just going to add a quick little story to that. Um, yeah. One of my early yoga teachers um, who I studied with and got my certification with was a yoga teacher and taught worldwide um, for over 20 years. She ran yoga studios and things like that. And then at the age of 47, she had a baby yeah. and her husband yeah. <laughs> at the age of 47. And I think she was 47. It was really close to that. And um, then shortly after, I think a couple years after, um, she and her husband quit the yoga world pretty much completely. He got a job in biomedical engineering and she became an artist. Now she probably always was an artist. I just never heard her talk about her art. Yeah. Ever really. She it was always yoga. And so I was like heartbroken that they quit teaching because I love these teachers, <laughs> but you should see her art. It is like amazing. She's so right. gifted. Yeah. yeah. So gifted and uh, and started that later in life. So there's different phases, you know, that maybe you want to do different things and you just you find the courage and fight the fear and the perfection and, and do it anyway. Right. Exactly. And it doesn't <laughs> matter what age you do it at, whether it's, you know, becoming a mom or becoming a mom and an artist or whatever it is. It's never too late. Yeah. So, Carrie Ann, where can people find you? What 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 are your offerings currently? Where can people find you? So uh, you can find me and I would assume, well, they can see my name spelled on here, but I assume you're going to put a link. It's hard to spell my name, uh, but you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on YouTube, on LinkedIn. You can find me pretty much everywhere except for Twitter. Um, my website, of course, CarrieAnnMunstead.com. And uh, one of the things that I would like to share with your listeners is I just started a new Facebook community called Real is the New Perfect. It's a group for high achieving women to ditch perfectionism and just be real. So that's a brand new Facebook group that I have just started literally in the last couple of weeks. So if that's something that you too suffer from, like I do perfectionism, um, I would love for you to find that on Facebook and come join me over there. I, you know what? I'm going to tell my daughter about that because she's she she identifies as a perfectionist yeah. and she would probably love that camaraderie and, and learning. Um, you know how to how to uh, manage that because it's not like it's not like a bad thing like no. every every personality um what do you call it every personality mm, um tendency can go from being really unhealthy to be you know to be exactly healthy, right exactly. And, yeah so right. there's 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 i don't know the spectrum yeah, so there's, healthy, there's healthy striving, right? Healthy striving where you can accept feedback and, and those types of things. And then there's the type of perfectionism that I have suffered from, which is like the the type where I, I can't move forward with certain things in my life because it's just holding me back so much. So definitely different spectrums of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, gosh, thank you so much, Carrie Ann, for being my guest tonight. I'm so You're grateful welcome. that you joined me. I love your story. It's so inspiring. And I hope it inspires those of you listening out there. And um, I, I do want to draw your attention. If you're on my Facebook page, you can see I just put up a new photo, the new Facebook. Um, what do they call it? The Facebook photo, whatever it is, profile thing. And it says, what do you really, really, really want? And then it says, no, really, because so many times we don't ask ourselves that. And what I've learned is that um, we don't really we don't really think about what we want. We think about what we can have. And there are two different things. So what you really want is is possible, but you might not think you can have it. So I'm going to invite you to stretch your mind a little bit and see if you can open up to bigger possibilities 
Because when you do that, you affect the world. Like when you have your own joy from your own service, then you affect the world. And it's like the rippling effect. And just like um, Carrie Ann is doing what she's doing. She's helping people with perfectionism. And the, what a beautiful thing. So anyway, uh, if you want to have a conversation with me about your dreams and what you really, really, really want, find me here on Facebook and or LisaNellerCoaching.com. It's been a pleasure and I'm so glad you joined us tonight. Thanks so much and have a great night and have a great week. Bye, Carrie Ann. Thank you. Stay with me.